Please subscribe Sporta TV for more information. MotoGP and Formula 1 2023. KTM have issued a response after being questioned about signing Marc Marquez. Marquez's top choice for 2025 is to be promoted to Ducati's factory team. But, he insisted after the French MotoGP last weekend that his pursuit of a factory bike did not depend on the color or the brand. It was a hint which seemingly opened the door to the likes of KTM or Aprilia, or Pramac Ducati. But KTM Motorsport Director Pitt Beirer has now had his say. Marc Marquez has been a hero for us in this sport since we competed in MotoGP, Beirer told Motorsport Magazine. We have huge respect for Marc. But I don't think it's a realistic option for us. You have to think about what a brutal time Mark has had. I talked to him last summer and his desire was simply to find a motorcycle that he knew he could be completely competitive with. With this bike he wanted to get back to the top and he achieved that. That's why I don't see him changing brands again, which would mean a completely new beginning for him. Mark is a brilliant rider, but I don't think it's really realistic for us to talk about signing him. KTM have Brad Binder and Pedro Acosta contracted for next year, and Jack Miller and Augusto Fernandez with expiring deals. The 2025 MotoGP rider lineup is currently revolving around Ducati's decision about Pecco Bagnaia's teammate. Grazini's Marquez and Promex Jorge Martin want to replace Ania Bastianini, and a decision is due around Mugello, which begins on May 31st. KTM know that whoever is left disappointed by Ducati's decision would become available on the rider market. It is clear that at Ducati there is currently a surplus of absolutely exceptional greats in our sport, Beirer said. But we also have to be careful. With Pedro we have a real diamond in the rough on board and also Brad, who is damn strong. We have to be careful not to let too many riders attack each other on the same level in order to maintain a good overall atmosphere in the project. We are of course excited to see what happens at Ducati. Several riders definitely want the place in their factory team and there will be some disappointed faces among the riders who don't get it. Then of course you have to pick up the phone in a friendly manner when someone calls. Jack Miller could reportedly find a 2025 home at Honda. His place at KTM is coming under increasing threat from the prodigious Pedro Acosta. Where normally all the stuff is clean. Uh... KTM demoted Paul Espargaro last year to make room for Acosta at Tech 3 Gascas, and he has stolen the show in MotoGP this season. A new contract is mooted for Acosta, 19, which would involve a step up into the factory KTM squad next year. With Brad Binder already tied to a long-term deal but Miller's contract set to expire, the Australian's future is up for debate. Miller could sign a new contract to swap places with Acosta and join Tech 3 Gascas but he has admirers elsewhere. Miller is a good option for Honda, Sky report from the Le Mans paddock last weekend. Honda have Repsol's Luca Marini and LCR's Johan Zarco contracted for next year already but there is no guarantee over the futures of Joan Mir or Takaki Nakagami in the 2025 MotoGP rider lineup. Miller's experience and developmental prowess could be seen as key for Honda's rebuild. Miller is currently divided between Tech 3 Gascas or Honda for next year, it is reported. Miller, of course, spent his first three years in MotoGP with Honda. He was with LCR in his rookie year then Mark VDS Honda in 2016 and 2017, before switching to Ducati. Um, it's, uh, yeah, Miller was behind teammate Binder last year, his first with KTM. Now he has also fallen behind new stablemate Acosta too. Still a valued rider, his future appears to be a decision between Gaskas or a move to Honda. On the other hand, Marc Marquez's late overtake of Peko Banyaya at the French MotoGP was a victory in a mental game, it has been claimed. The Grazzini rider swooped on the last lap to sensationally pass the factory Ducati rider, and claim P2 at Le Mans. But the wider context is the psychological advantage Marquez took from Bagnaia in France, after Bagnaia emerged victorious in their wheel-to-wheel -wheel scrap in Jerez. From 13th on the grid, normally you have no chance, Sylvain Gintoli said on TNT Sports. It's impossible. 
Even if you have a good start, you make inroads, and you make no mistakes, you are going to get tangled in battles that you don't want to be involved in. You are going to lose time. He was able to make passes stick. He capitalized on a mistake by Maverick Vinales. Every opportunity for Mark, he managed to stick his front wheel in and make it stick. To not lose time. It is so hard to do, when you start from that far back. The battle with Fabio Di Antonio was super clean up the inside. Di Antonio twice tried to respond. On the final lap, the pass on Banyaya. How far back was he, when he launched the attack? Unbelievable how he managed to stop that, and make it stick. Look at him on the inside, there's no way you can stop that. He still does it. He uses the curb on the exit and makes it stick. He defends on the last section. Inch perfect. He covers the line, there is no way Peko can get second place back. He wins the duel. The duel that he lost in Jerez. That will matter to Mark. And to Peko, actually. These are mental games. This is really important for the rest of the season. Mark got his own back. Michael Laverty said about the French MotoGP which Jorge Martin won, I had been waiting for this three-man battle. They are the class acts in MotoGP now, and are on similar machinery. Mark's is a year-old version and he's battling two GP24S. But the tools Mark has got? The team that Mark has got around him? It's enough. If he was on the second row, it would have been a different kettle of fish. It's nice to see how much he's loving it. It is reigniting his passion for the sport. Gintoli replied, he sacrificed everything. His contract at Honda, a whole lot of money, just to enjoy himself racing again. It goes back to 2020, the massive injury then the years that followed which were difficult on the sporting side because his bike wasn't competitive. When you know you've got the weapon underneath you, and the team who can bring you to podiums and fights for victory, there is nothing that feels so good. He will feel that the sacrifices were worth it.